Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nothing new. Um, so I'm walking back again with, with my usual question. Um, so, um, how do you both see the relationship between arts and activism? Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a break. You did an amazing tip just now, so just like rest a little bit. <laughs> it's me again. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, definitely massive relationship between uh, arts and activism, uh, because arts is like so often the catalyst for change. When you hear a really good song or a poem or a theatre piece, and it inspires you to do something, I think those are acts of what we are being. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like moments of rebellion is a really good one too. Um, so with my uh, with my poem that the where is the poetry of resistance is not about those kind of like it doesn't have to be the massive massive changes. It can be individual ones as well. Whether you change your mindset or you know support someone in need, I think those are like huge um, acts of like heroism and activism. Uh, and a couple of years ago uh, in two that well 2017 that's not a couple of years ago. So, right. um, 2017, I helped to run a festival called Uprising uh, in Canterbury, and it was all about young people uh, and the arts, and it was completely young people led, and it was uh, them getting support in uh, education, employment, and mental health. Um, but it was them actually like talking to the adults in the room. So we had um, Darren Henley, who's the chief executive of the Arts Council there. And they were like. Listen, this is what we want. Because the whole motto was like, no decisions about us without us. So it was all about the arts, but um, using this as catalysts for change. So at the end of that, we, it was like a full day of talks and workshops, and we created a manifesto, which was amazing. And uh, with that, it, there were community projects as well. Uh, so it really kind of like did reach like a, a huge audience, not just that one day. And I think that was a really good kind of example of it, because like, I think there's a lot of power with young people to uh, rebel and kind of change things uh, and it's also again like arts giving people a voice so um, it's not a plug but it's a plug but my new show <laughs> <It's called Yeah. laughs> uh, I'm still developing it it's called Queer Brown Skin but it's based on um, so it's about trauma and it's based on my own experiences uh, the trauma of sexual assault and racism and this journey of healing but I saw um, I've, I've been always like quite nervous to talk about it because it's still like a huge triggering thing for me but I saw a, a theatre production a few years ago and it was just like the worst thing about survivors it just always ends in death like if you if, if you're a survivor then you're like and then they die the dramatic effect and I was like right I'm not doing this anymore I can't yeah. have another theatre piece where they just all die or they just yeah I, I can't have it with women just being thrown and just sit there uh, so I was like I'm going to do my own one yeah. Yes. Activism. And that's, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes. Oh, hi. So you've covered it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, actually, when you sent the question in the email, I thought, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> maybe because like, activism sounds a bit scary to me, and it's sort of as, unless you know you're going to like chain yourself to something and be quite sort of. Righteous, it can feel a bit scary, but the more I thought about it, is that I just think the whole point of the arts is that there is a way of raising consciousness which doesn't necessarily feel so shoved in your face. And while activism like that is fantastic, and I'm not knocking it, sometimes it's quite nice to approach something differently. Um, and I feel that with art, you're given the opportunity, like for example with Hetero You, with that poem, is I can go, well, let me put you in my shoes or show you something from a different perspective. And I think that that's how art can kind of use activism without it feeling so daunting and scary. I'm done. Great. Um any any other questions for anyone else? No? Okay. Um <laughs> so um the the next one then is what current issues are you thinking about to do with gender at the moment? Um <laughs> Um I was thinking about women's health. Um, because um, I have uh, pains in my vagina. <laughs> I've had them for about eight years and I just didn't do anything about it because I was like, this is just what being a woman is, I guess. Uh, and, um, like, I, I, long story, but like, I, I've apparently got polycystic ovaries, but not polycystic ovary syndrome. But then they put me on the pill 
to like see if that helped. It didn't. I'm like on it for about a month and two weeks. And it's just like all of the side effects are just horrible. I'm, I just feel so like just depressed and anxious. And I was like, oh, I never used to be like this. And I think that that because they think it might be endometriosis, which is again like so little research done about it. Because again, it's like women's pain, so it's like that's fine. You've done it for these many years, it's fine. Is anyone else on like contraception or feels that they just yeah, it's it's horrible, isn't it? Like it's you, when you're <laughs> <It's just nothing. laughs> they put me on it because my periods are so bad. Yeah. They were like, just keep taking pills, don't have them. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it, if it works for you, great. But there's like when you open, I'm on Regevedon, and that's that's what they just like. Put, like no one told me about any side effects. It was only when I was on them for two weeks that I looked up, and it's like someone died on this. Oh. Like okay, that's fine. And then the little leaf, thing, you open it up, and it's like. A huge fucking scroll of like, everything's gonna go wrong with you. And oh, yeah, and your blood pressure's gonna increase. That's gonna be really fun as well. But I just feel like that it's really annoying that there aren't, you know, things like endometriosis or um, virginian. Virginismus, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, not really, either it's not researched much or just, yeah, there's, I feel like there's not enough attention like, given to that. And all these women just have to suffer. Or, like, we do it for years and then we're finally like, ah, oh, help. And then doctors are like, oh no, it's fine, like, that's just in your head. Like in hysteria, I'm like, no. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just think that that should be kind of looked at a lot more because it's just, yeah, it's annoying. I didn't get help and I was like, yeah, it's been eight years and I just was suffering with this as well. And it's still not over, but um, yeah, I think pay attention to women more. There's enough diet pills and stuff, just like all of the, these, these pills that we don't really need, but it's not actually about like pain relief and like things that are super important. Um but yeah. Care about vaginas. <laughs> <laughs>